It's a sad fact of reality that the longer a franchise runs for, the more likely it is that it will show signs of slowing down, whether that's due to a few bum titles or audiences simply losing interest. For many series, this may spell the end, but every so often a shiny new game will come along to reinvigorate interest in a property and get players back on board, whether it's by going back to basics, trying something new, or simply giving them more of what they loved but better. For this list, we're looking at the titles that revived their respective franchises, bringing old players back to a much-loved IP and often getting new players on board as well. Just for clarity, these series don't need to have been failing, but will have at least had a bit of a lull at one point or another. With all that nice and clear, I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video games that breathed new life into classic series. Number 10. Rayman Origins The original Rayman is among the best platformers of its time and was so enjoyable that gamers are still playing it today. In fact, as recently as 2018, a port was preloaded onto the PlayStation Classic, which was, you know, not great, allowing new generations of gamers to experience the title in all of its original glory. Rayman spawned two sequels, both of which got a decent reception from critics, but following the release of Rayman 3 Hoodlum Havoc, almost a decade passed that was suspiciously Raymanless. Thankfully, it was not the end for the Rayman series, as in 2010, Ubisoft announced Rayman Origins, a game that was set to revive the series and bring it up to date. Rayman Origins not only revived the series, but restored it to max health as well. On most platforms, Origins review scores surpassed those of the original, and critics were massively impressed by its creativity and playfulness. One reviewer even went so far as to say that it was the best 2D platformer not called Mario, which is high praise indeed. Sadly, aside from a couple of mobile games, the series has remained dormant since Origins' follow-up Rayman Legends, but here's hoping that Ubisoft have a brand new title planned that they're just keeping under their hats. Number 9. XCOM Enemy Unknown the thing about the XCOM series is that it's never really been bad, and even the less good titles like Interceptor and Enforcer weren't exactly candidates for worst games ever. What the XCOM games were, however, was complex, and the turn-based strategy on offer often proved too convoluted for players unfamiliar with the genre. Following the release of XCOM Enforcer, the series went somewhat quiet, and though two new titles were announced, neither saw the light of day. Things didn't look good for the franchise, and it seems safe to assume that it was dead in the water. In January 2012, however, Firaxis Games and 2K announced XCOM Enemy Unknown, and it was released in October of the same year. The game was badged as a reimagined remake of the similarly titled 1994 original, taking many elements of its predecessor and refining them for a new generation. The result was still a turn-based game of tactics, but one that was much more straightforward for players to get their heads around. Enemy Unknown somehow managed to maintain enough of the mechanics from the original so as not to put off veteran fans, but simplified things enough that it was accessible to a wide variety of players, and for that, we applaud them. Number 8. Ninja Gaiden, or Gaiden if you want to pronounce it differently, uh, about this. In the early 2000s, if you were the owner of an Xbox, then it's highly likely that at some point or another you played Ninja Gaiden. After all, the hack and slash title ended up being one of the best games released on the platform, so if you never bothered with it, you really did miss out. It may surprise some of you to find out, however, that 2004's Ninja Gaiden was in fact a reboot of a series that first made its debut in arcades back in 1988. It wasn't long before Ninja Gaiden had made its way onto home consoles, though, and thanks to the success of the NES title, a number of sequels and ports were released. Though both sequels fared well with audiences, the series disappeared in the mid-90s with no indication that it would ever return. Fortunately for fans, this wasn't the case, and in 2004 the franchise was revived. Ninja Gaiden wowed audiences, setting a new standard for action games at the time with its depth and level of challenge. Unfortunately, however, the success that the reboot enjoyed didn't last, and though 2008's Ninja Gaiden 2 was pretty good, the same can't be said for any of the titles that have come since. Number 7. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard to say that the Resident Evil series was in trouble following the release of Resident Evil 6 is a bit of an understatement. The franchise was already on thin ice with longtime fans after Resi 5 almost entirely shrugged off the series' survival horror roots, and when 6 ended up disappointing them further, it seemed like the Resident Evil everyone loved was gone and forgotten. 
Revelations 2 did go some of the way to repairing the damage, however a lot of that work was undone by Umbrella Corps, which is undoubtedly the worst Resident Evil game ever made. Thankfully, it seems like Capcom were listening to fans, as in 2017 they released the outstanding Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which received critical acclaim. Gone were the all-American action heroes, replaced instead with Everyman Ethan Winters, who spends the vast majority of the game's runtime trapped on the Baker estate. Resident Evil 7 was all of the things a good survival horror should be. It was claustrophobic, every enemy posed a serious threat, resources were scarce, and most importantly, it was legitimately terrifying. The game was a huge success, and with Resident Evil Village releasing in 2021 to a similar critical response, it seems like the franchise might finally be back on track. Number 6. Wolfenstein The New Order You'd think that people would never tire of gunning down Nazis and thwarting their evil schemes, but if the trajectory of the Wolfenstein series is anything to go by, you'd be wrong. Although the franchise has been around since 1981, it was 1992's Wolfenstein 3D that really put the series on the map. The title was both a critical and a commercial success, and is regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time, helping to popularise the first-person shooter genre and inspiring many games that have come since. Unfortunately, the franchise seemed to run out of steam following Wolfenstein 3D's release, and it would be almost ten years before another title would see the light of day. 2001's return to Castle Wolfenstein was a decent game, but it failed to live up to what had come before it. The next attempt, a reboot titled simply Wolfenstein, also wasn't brilliant, and it seemed like the series was destined to fizzle out. Thankfully, however, the world wasn't ready to give up on Wolfenstein, and in 2014, Machine Games and Bethesda welcomed Wolfenstein The New Order into the world. Unlike its predecessors, The New Order was keen to delve into the character of BJ Blazkowicz, a move which clearly paid off considering just how much praise the game received. Seems like you can teach an old wolf new tricks. Number 5. Castlevania Lords of Shadow Like the Wolfenstein series, Castlevania is one of those video game franchises that feels like it's been around since before the dawn of time, and also like the Wolfenstein series, it's had plenty of ups and downs in its 35-year history. Between 1986 and 1996, there were no less than a dozen different titles released under the Castlevania umbrella, and aside from the odd dud, they were mostly serviceable. Then, in 1997, along came Castlevania Symphony of the Night to make everyone else look bad. Symphony of the Night told the story of Dracula's creatively named Dampier's son, Alucard, and was so well received that it's often cited as being one of the greatest games ever made. Following its release, Konami continued to churn out Castlevania titles, but none managed to live up to the critical success of Symphony, and eventually, sales began to dwindle. Aware of the series' languishing fanbase, Konami had several prototypes compete to be the next instalment, but it was Lords of Shadow that eventually got the thumbs up. Co-produced by Hideo Kojima, Lords of Shadow managed to modernise the series' gameplay mechanics while still holding on to the essence of Castlevania, resulting in a game that impressed diehard fans and newcomers alike, and outsold every other Castlevania title. Sadly, these sequels were pretty ploppers, but hey, you can't have everything, can you? Number 4. Tomb Raider It's hard to believe that everyone's favourite lady adventurer has been gracing our consoles for over 25 years now, but it's true, and over the past quarter century, our gal Lara Croft has had her fair share of good times and not-so-good ones. Upon its release, 1996's Tomb Raider was an unmitigated success, both critically and commercially, and thanks to its many triumphs, developer Core Design went on to release four sequels in as many years. Unsurprisingly, the quality of these games got progressively worse, and the developer spent a bit more time on the series' sixth outing, Angel of Darkness, but they probably shouldn't have bothered because it ended up being total tosh. Following that debacle, development duties moved over to Crystal Dynamics, who churned out a couple more sequels before realising that the public was probably ready for something hot and or fresh. With this in mind, they rebooted the series in 2013 and gave audiences a Lara Croft origin story that would see her embark on a character-defining journey, the likes of which they would have never seen before. Their decision paid off, and within 48 hours of its release, Tomb Raider had sold over 1 million copies, and by April 2015, it had become the best-selling Tomb Raider title ever released. Number 3. Doom To be clear, there was never any indication that the Doom series was having any kind of problems in terms of quality, however there was an extended period of radio silence for the series for over ten years following the release of Doom 3. Sure, there were a couple of remasters, but there was no fresh meat for players to sink their teeth into. 
Its software were hard at work behind the scenes, though, and in 2016 they loudly declared that meat was back on the menu thanks to a reboot of the Doom franchise. Originally announced as Doom 4 back in 2008, the whole thing went through a bunch of different development cycles before finally being titled Doom in 2011. Players take on the role of the Doom Slayer, a space marine on a mission to dispatch the demonic forces of hell unleashed by the Union Aerospace Corporation. We've all been there. In terms of gameplay, Doom forwent the slow-paced survival horror stylings of Doom 3 and instead reverted back to the fast-paced gunplay of the OG Doom in its 1994 sequel. Critics and audiences alike were very impressed by the game, heralding it as a return to form for the series. It captured the spirit of its predecessors whilst refining certain elements to ensure that modern audiences would be fully on board. Number 2. Mortal Kombat when Mortal Kombat burst onto the scene in 1992, it quickly became a smash hit despite everything its naysayers said and did to try and tear it down. Naturally, a sequel came soon after, and by the turn of the millennium, the series was well established. The cracks were already starting to show, though, as Mortal Kombat 4 released to a less than stellar reception and Mortal Kombat Mythology's Sub-Zero was nothing short of pitiful. More games followed in the 2000s, and the lore became incredibly convoluted to the point that it was barely understandable. When Midway Games folded in 2009, the license for Mortal Kombat passed to Warner Bros, and rather than trying to cobble something onto the already slightly wonky narrative, they decided to reboot the series entirely. And so, in 2011, Mortal Kombat was released recently setting the timeline. The game was received very well by both audiences and critics, with some outlets even going as far as to say that it was the best Mortal Kombat yet. Not only did the game balance over-the-top viscera with brilliant fighting mechanics, but it was also bursting with content, boasting 28 playable characters at launch. Since the reboot, two sequels have been released, both garnering positive reviews and several awards. Number 1. God of War don't get us wrong, by no means was the God of War series in any kind of trouble prior to its 2018 reboot, and possibly with the exception of Ascension, the franchise has never really faltered in terms of quality. Between 2005 and 2013, there were several different God of War games released for various platforms, not to mention all of the various remasters and re-releases of God of Wars 1, 2, and 3. Following the release of God of War Ascension, however, things went a bit quiet in Camp Kratos. It turns out, though, that Santa Monica Studio were hard at work rebooting the series, and oh boy did they smash it out of the park! 2018's God of War follows Kratos and his son Atreus as they attempt to spread the ashes of Kratos' second wife, Atreus' mother, at the highest peak of the Nine Realms. The game received universal critical acclaim for everything from its story and characters to its world design and art direction. Not only was it a massive hit with longtime God of War fans, but it also attracted new players to the series. It tied the original God of War as the highest rated game in the series and won a number of awards, including a golden joystick for PlayStation Game of the Year and the Game Awards Game of the Year accolade. 